I have long been adamant about the fact that I primarily draft fast drafts in best ball, but I'm a weak man and I've caved this summer in 2024 to the slow draft fever. I am now in well over a hundred slow drafts. And today we're going to dive into my thought process, how I decide who to pick when I'm on the clock in a whole bunch of slow drafts at the same time in the first edition of what we're calling slow draft hell here at spike week. Let's do it. All right, guys, as I said in the intro, I am in too many slow drafts and I've been stockpiling just a few on the clock in 25 or 30 slow drafts right now. We're going to walk through all of those, make those picks, talk through the thought process, look at my exposures in my portfolio to see what is driving my selections in these show drafts, slow drafts. Quickly, before we get into that, of course, hit the like and subscribe button so we can keep these shows free, all that fun stuff. And also shout out to my good friend, Ben Gretsch, a.k.a. at Yards Per Gretsch on Twitter and his Stealing Signals newsletter and his Stealing Signals YouTube page. He is in a a state that is not, uh, he has to drive out of state to get into underdog drafts. And so he's in a ton of slow drafts and he, this, this uh, concept came from him. Uh, So shout out to him and go check out his you know, shows and streams and everything where he's doing something very similar to this. Ben is one of the best in the business. You'll enjoy that. So go check that out as well when we're done here. But let's go ahead and start to dive into this. Um, quickly, you'll see on my screen here, I may bounce back and forth between you're seeing our draft IQ tool on Spike Week. This is what will help me. Of course, I have the draft hacker up in each one of these draft rooms so I can see a lot of this information on my screen, but I will sometimes go back and look at some different player combinations and just different things from about my portfolio in a specific tournament or just to gather a little bit of more, a little bit more information to make those kind of tiebreaker decisions in the slow draft. But let's start, let's start with underdog. I'm in a bunch of, excuse me, I'm in a bunch of puppy two right now. I think pretty much just puppy two and eliminator. Uh, there is a super flex. Let's, let's, let's start with the super flex uh, just because that one's quite unique. Uh, in the ninth round here of a super flex draft, and we started, we've got Jaden Daniels and Trevor Lawrence. Aaron Jones is our first running back, Trey McBride, and some wide receivers. So uh, pretty quickly, you see here on the top of the screen, um, a lot of wide receivers. Brian Thomas is popping off quickly to me here. I'm going to just toss him in the queue. Obviously, I have Trevor Lawrence, but I do not have any stacking partners with Trevor Lawrence. I also, ironically, do not have a lot of Brian Thomas. Uh, Let me zoom just a tick here. I do not have a ton of of Brian Thomas, just 4% um, in Superflex drafts. Just 4% in Superflex drafts. So uh, this first number is what we call the slate percentage. So he's very clearly standing out to me, like just immediately pops off the screen at you. I am obviously in need of some running backs, but I think the number one, you know, Evan Ingram is gone. Christian Kirk is gone. Uh, I do have Jane Daniels already stacked with Terry McLaurin. I'm strong at wide receiver, but I feel pretty confident in the running backs coming up here. Uh, I'll be back on the clock at pick one, one fifteen, where I'll probably assuredly be hammering some running backs. And there's a whole bunch of guys here that I really, really like that should be around uh, and some guys that fit fit this team from a correlation perspective. You see some of these guys lighting up in blue, meaning they are correlated with a non-quarterback. So Raheem Mostert here correlated with Jalen Waddle. Uh, this one's a, a little bit pretty, pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and take Brian Thomas, get my Trevor Lawrence stack out of the way. All right, let's bounce back. Start at the top. We're in a whole bunch of these, so I'm not going to keep you here too long. I mean, the, the drafts are slow for me. The show doesn't need to be slow for you. All right. This one's quick, right? Picking at the 104. Uh, I do want to see what my actual exposure is to Jamar Chase versus Justin Jefferson. Not like it's a big deal. So I have 9% Jamar Chase, 11% uh, Justin Jefferson. Not I would have taken Jamar Chase either way, but just something to... You know, if I had 25% Jamar Chase and 6% uh, 
of Justin Jefferson. Maybe that would be something that might sway me, but pretty straightforward here. Again, in, at the 105, <laughs> I entered some of these uh, last night, this morning, something something like that. Uh, I think this morning. So a couple of these may be pretty quick to get through. It's 108. This is an interesting one. At the 108, actually, uh, I have been taking more of Garrett Wilson and Puka Nakua over A.J. Brown. As you see here, I have not selected A.J. Brown. I think I'm actually going to uh, – I've gotten up to – I've been taking a ton of Garrett Wilson, uh, like at this spot, actually. And I have a pretty strong percentage of, of Puka Nakua. I'm, I'm comfortable with having more, and I plan to have more Garrett Wilson and Puka Nakua than A.J. Brown. But I do think I'm actually going to break that seal on A.J. Brown and see what we can do with an A.J. Brown team here in the Puppy. Moving on down, Eliminator. We're in a Eliminator, uh, of course, in the first round. Uh, I am I am going to have a little fun with this one, though, and take Garrett Wilson in the Eliminator. I just want to check the... So, again, uh, slate percentage, meaning... Uh, let me go to... Quickly change this to the Eliminator. And... Watch these numbers update. So I have 20. So as it updates, right, when I, I change the tournament over here to the eliminator so that the slight percentage matches with the eliminator, I actually I actually do think I'm going to take AJ Brown. I don't want to have 0% AJ Brown in the eliminator. Uh, I want to have, as I mentioned, I want to have more Garrett Wilson and more Puka Nakua than, than AJ Brown. But I'm, I've got 25% up until this point of Garrett Wilson and 17% of Puka Nakua. That was not completely intentional. I swear a lot of my picks have landed so i'm we're, we're, we're gonna get my some of my aj brown exposure here let's take a look here all right we're finally on to one in the picking at the 506 in the fifth round here i bet you this one's gonna be super easy so currently started at the 106 i'm on ross St. brown Devonte adams cooper cup with travis kelsey got a nice got a pretty solid price on travis kelsey Pretty solid prices, you know, all across the board. Add ADP, add ADP, add ADP, and then get a little bit of a value on Travis Kelsey. And I'm going to take Keenan Allen. Kind of a slam dunk for me. Keenan is significantly is ranked significantly higher for me in this uh, in everything. It, certainly in the Eliminator, but in in all of these tournaments on Underdog, and I honestly feel like I should have more quite frankly of, uh, of Keenan Allen. So let's go ahead and take him. Let's adjust the screen a little bit here. No, I don't like it on this side. Try this one. No, no, no. We'll go back to the right side. All right. Got a lot of drafts to get through back to Keenan Allen. First round pick in the puppy. It looks like, 106, take Justin Jefferson, easy peasy. Let's get to some of the good stuff, man. All these first round picks. Let's scroll. Let's 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 go down and get into some of the more fun spots. All right, puppy two. And we are at the 904. See, I had already added Joe Burrow and Raheem Mostert into the queue. Let's if I look down at my team view here, I don't have any stacks. I do have six very, very strong wide receivers with the Ramondre Stevenson as my first running back and David and Joku as my first tight end. Okay. I'm comfortable with this. We, we do, uh, this is a Jamar chase team. Yeah. So we've got a Jamar chase team, which means Joe Burrow clearly makes sense. I don't want to do Dak without any of the, the Cowboys, as you see that, you know, nothing lighting up on the screen here for Dak. Cortland Sutton is interesting because he correlates with Jamar Chase in week 17, as you see in yellow here. Uh, however, we're at pick 100. Jim, Joe Burrow has an ADP of 87.6, so we're around past. I don't pick again until 117. Joe Burrow is not going to make it back. I also don't have much Joe Burrow at all. Uh, that's not really intentional. It just has been how the drafts have played out to me. So this looks like the absolute perfect spot to me to take Joe Burrow, get my exposure to him, stack him up. I got Broncos available later and I love, I'm about to hit the sweet spot 
of running backs that I love, kind of like I mentioned before. So I'll be, you know, it's going to be a hot minute before I'm back on the clock, but we're going to get into this running back range of guys that I really, really love. I'm zoomed in a little bit too much. So let's take Joe Burrow. All right. I like these these ones where we're not in the first round. All right. Sixth round. Sixth round, and we started. Let's look at the board. We had the 103. We took Tyree Kill, Nico Collins, Malik Neighbors, Travis Kelsey, Keenan Allen. Another looks like a good price on Travis Kelsey here. Yeah, 46 for Kelsey. Nico falls a little bit. Neighbors falls a little bit. Okay, we don't want to screw this one. Let's not screw this one up, guys. All right. It is definitely a tricky spot here because I do not love any of these running backs. I'm I'm okay with Joe Mixon. He does have some correlations here. I have him with you know him and Nico. I also have Stroud past ADP with Nico Collins. Christian Watson, top wide receiver on the board. I like, I don't love for this team. I'm, I think we're going to turn this into a Stroud team. I don't have a ton of seven, so I'm about at the market with CJ Stroud, getting him at a pretty good price. I I will say, let's, let's look at the, let's actually look at the teams on the turn. So Randy here after me, just to see, if CJ Stroud might fall all the way back to me, if there's a guy that I would rather take here, like let's say I want to take Joe Mixon here. Joe Mixon is also past ADP. I'm not a Rashad White guy, so sorry to the Rashad White stands out there. Let's let's say I want to take Joe Mixon, really build out the Houston stack. I'm clearly, I mean, I, I could use a running back. <laughs> I do like Joe. I actually do like Joe Mixon at this price. So let's see if Randy would be the kind of guy who might take CJ Stroud. I could push him around to the, cause I pick again at the seven Oh three. So Randy does not have any Houston Texans. He does have Mark Andrews, but he's a little thin at wide receiver. I don't, I would be comfortable trying to see like almost trying to bait Randy into taking, sorry, Randy, if you're out there and uh, I am poop. Yo <laughs> is at the turn. Also doesn't have any Houston players. Has Christian McCaffrey, Mike Evans, Devonta Smith, Hollywood Brown. I think I'm going to take Mixon and try to push him around the turn. So, so worst case scenario, I don't get him, and it's fine, right? None of my other quarter – Tyreek Hill, uh, so Mahomes is gone. But Tyreek Hill, Tua is available to me later, you know, Daniel Jones. And then Caleb Williams, still available to me. If, if let's say Christian Watson falls, great. That sets me up with another stack. I could take Jackson, Jackson Smith and Jigba, set myself up for, for, for Gino, or uh, I, I could take my second tight end and take Evan Ingram and set up another stack, or I could just take some of this running back value. I'm strong at tight end. I'm strong at wide receiver. I, I, it gives me the most flexibility, I think. Put these guys to the test. CJ Shroud is the kind of player who falls a lot in drafts uh, because if people don't have the Houston Texans wide receiver, CJ Stroud's Generally not an awesome pick. So I'm going to take, uh, I just about said, I'm going to take CJ Stroud. I'm going to take Joe Mixon, build out this Houston Texans bet a little bit here. And like I said, worst case scenario, we don't get, we don't get Stroud. We'll be all right. Uh, let's go back to this eliminator that just started. Oh, we got the 101. CD Lamb, easy peasy. I know that that doesn't seem easy peasy to the average person, but uh, uh, I do take CD Lamb 101 over Christian McCaffrey. So let's do that. Puppy 105. Nice. Justin Jefferson. Also easy peasy. Next. Eliminator again. First round. 102. So let's do CD Lamb. Let's get these boring ones out of the way. Get into the good stuff. All right. We are in the seventh at the seven ten. Oh, 
Kyler at the top of the, I, I see that Aaron Jones already popping off the screen. Oh, Kyler correlated Kyler Marvin Harrison. I like that. I like that a lot. So let's take a look here. Kyler sets up awesome for this stack. David Montgomery. There is uh, some week 17 here. You see me highlighting. Uh, you see that pops. It probably doesn't pop to you guys, but in, in when I see blue, I see that correlation without a quarterback. Uh, and then I see my light blue for my stack here, Kyler Murray and Marvin Harrison. Um, I think this is going to be solid at wide receiver. Not going to force Jamison Williams, although Jamison Williams, as you see, also does correlate in week 17 with George Kittle down here. But I am going to pretty easily take Kyler Murray, I think, at this pick. Sometimes it's nice when the uh, when the draft hacker does its job and just makes my pick easy for me and says, hey, dum-dum, see this blue? Take that guy. Probably a pretty good pick. Ooh, let's see what we got here. Is this Kelsey? Is this Kelsey? Is this Kelsey? I like to wait for the hacker to load. Oh, it is Kelsey. So, interestingly, Patrick Mahomes correlating with Travis Kelsey. Justin Jefferson, Jalen Waddle, Terry McLaurin. Oh, huge. All the wide receivers I like are gone here. Wow. Major wide receiver room. You see Calvin Ridley and Xavier Worthy already off the board. Keenan Allen went at the 412. So close, but a little bit earlier than he usually goes. Mark Andrews already gone. I took Terry McLaurin. 44th overall Trey McBride you could see I was clearly like oh man we got a wide receiver run going here T gone at 38 Amari gone at 37 Pickens gone at 41 Kirk right so stayed out ahead of the wide receiver avalanche with with my Terry McLaurin pick very happy that I did because it continued right which allowed me to now take this Patrick Mahomes Travis Kelsey stack uh, and still not be locked out of wide receiver. Still have three solid wide receivers through five rounds. We like that. All right, three more on underdog, and then I don't. There's like ten on drafters or fifteen, something like that. Ooh, nice, nice. Now this is a nice spot. Let's see. Let's see. We've got four wide receivers, so we probably don't have a lot of correlation. I'm, I do. It looks like I have a Houston wide receiver because uh, Mark Andrews is popping off the screen. None of these other guys, but I do like all you know four or five of the top guys on the board. Let's see who's on the team. Jamar Chase, Nico Collins, Cooper Cup, and Christian Kirk. I do think um, Andrews is my favorite option here. Let's look at exposure. So now here's a good one. I think... This is what, kind of one of the first few ones where I feel like it's really, really wide open. Honestly, I think you could take any four of these top guys. Of course, Mark, you could just say, oh, the Week 17 correlation. Got to take Mark Andrews here. And I think that's where my initial lean is. But I, as I start to look at some of these exposures, uh, I know this is a little bit hard to see, but there's 38% here for Mark Andrews. So I just hover over it and you can see I have 38% Mark Andrews with Jamar Chase. So on 38% of my Jamar Chase teams, Mark Andrews is on there. I like both of those players. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's a fairly hefty number for two players that don't really have any rhyme or reason to go together other than that they're good They're good picks. Meanwhile, when I look up here, I don't have any Terry McLaurin at the same – this uh, third to last percentage for me is the percentage of the time I have that player with my first-round pick. So I have 0%. Terry McLaurin with my first round pick and 21% of Terry McLaurin with Nico Collins and 16%. So it's the last three numbers being percentage with my first round pick, second round pick, third round pick, 16% of Terry McLaurin with Cooper cup. So Mark Andrews just significantly higher with Jamar chase and Nico Collins. Naturally, he should probably be a little bit higher with, with Nico Collins, but I, I actually think, so then I look at Keenan, I look down here at Keenan, and interestingly, 38% of Keenan also with Jamar Chase. So it looks like I'm doing a, quite a bit of Mark Andrews, Keenan Allen, and I have not yet done Terry McLaurin with Jamar Chase. It's not that I don't want 
the correlation aspect, obviously lighting up in blue makes Nico and Mark Andrews makes a ton of sense, but Terry McLaurin, just a, a couple of picks past ADP, not a, not a big deal. But then I also have never got never selected him with Jamar Chase. I think I'm actually going to use that one as my tiebreaker there because I really like Terry McLaurin and I really like Jamar Chase. There's no real reason that I should never ever have them together. I think if we flipped over the cards in September and I knew that I never had Terry McLaurin and Jamar Chase together, I think I'd probably be pretty pissed off. So we're going to take that opportunity here to do so. Looks like we just we're coming on the clock while we're here in uh, in this room. It's Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts. Let's see what wide receiver got three wide receivers start. What a shocker. Anybody, anybody looks like a Garrett Wilson team. Nothing really popping. Yeah, nothing. We, we might. I think we're going to turn this into Josh Allen, though. Nobody like totally popping off the screen. When I look at some of my percentages, Amari would make some sense just because I haven't been taking him very much. But I also haven't been taking Josh Allen very much in this, is specifically in this, uh, what is this, puppy? Uh, I don't have him. I don't have Josh Allen. And I think putting him on a Garrett Wilson team is a pretty it just kind of tie break towards towards Josh Allen, who I don't have very much of. I just take so many of these wide receivers and tight ends in this spot, take a little bit cheaper elite quarterbacks, but I think this is a good way, right? So I don't have, obviously, without having Josh Allen, naturally I'm not going to have Josh Allen with Garrett Wilson, and I think that that's another combination of players that I would want to have in my portfolio, even though uh, I'm not like crazy high on Josh Allen, st strictly because of price. He's he's a decent. It's come down a little bit, but he was quite a bit more expensive than Hertz, Lamar, Mahomes, uh, Richardson, etc. So I haven't been taking him. Now, now's a good time. This is the perfect ex example of now I can take some of them because he's fallen a little bit, and then he fits on this team quite well. All right, next one up, fourth round of a puppy. You can see I put a couple guys in the queue in this one, meaning, uh, but this is. Nice price on Zay. Okay. So I put, interestingly, I put Christian Kirk and Terry McLaurin in the queue, but Zay Flowers falls. Just a couple of picks. He never falls, which is kind of crazy. A lot of these guys, the variance on where they pick is, is quite high. This does look like it's another Garrett Wilson team. Garrett Wilson, Nico Collins, George Pickens. However, obviously Josh Allen correlates, but Zay Flowers correlates in week 17 and week 16 shout out our good friend mike leone from established run put out a a recent piece that uh some week 15 and 16 correlations may be a little bit uh understated it's still not particularly a priority to me but again when i'm on the clock here it can be an easy tiebreaker right i know that zay plus nico seems like a good pairing to have i don't have that pairing yet uh or actually i so i have one team with Zay Flowers and Garrett Wilson. I have zero teams with Zay Flowers and Nico and zero teams with Zay Flowers and George Pickens. And it's kind of the perfect little trio there. Uh, not so much Garrett Wilson, but the perfect little trio there to uh, correlate in week 16 and week 17 with Zay Flowers. Not a guy I take a ton. I think he's just a little bit overpriced relative to that. The Christian Kirk, George Pickens, um, Terry McLaurin, Amari Cooper. I think he's just a little bit overpriced relative to those guys. And then he just never falls. I would like to get a little bit more of him. So again, perfect spot to get a little bit more of Zay Flowers. One more on underdog. We'll move the drafters. Fifth round. Ooh, interesting. So four wide receiver start. Four wide receiver starts. Must be another Garrett Wilson. Jeez. Garrett Wilson, Devontae Adams, Tank Dell, Terry McLaurin. Okay. So Kyle Pitts, strong fit on this team. Need for tight end right at you know his cost. Anthony Richardson doesn't correlate here, but I don't have a lot of Anthony Richardson, and it's not because I don't love Anthony Richardson. I do have a good amount of Kyle Pitts, 20%. I have 20% of Kyle Pitts with Garrett Wilson, 19% with Devontae Adams, and 33% with Tank Dell. And then I know for sure I have a good clip of him with Terry McLaurin because they play in Week 17. So it's not that I don't like Kyle Pitts, uh, and it's not that I'm not interested in Kyle Pitts here. I very much am. 
but I actually think I am going to go with Anthony Richardson uh, right at ADP, of course. But again, using some of these tiebreakers, I don't have any of that. And it's there's not a lot of reason for me to basically have no, like almost no Richardson, right? But then almost no Richardson with four guys who I take a ton of. I take a lot of Garrett Wilson. I take a lot of Devontae Adams. I take a lot of Tank Dell. And I take a lot of Terry McLaurin. And I don't have any Anthony Richardson with them here, probably because I'm constantly clicking on <laughs> Kyle Pitts or or uh, not so much Chris Godwin, but there's probably a little too much worthy here. I have a good chunk of worthy with Garrett Wilson. So let's go actually go ahead and go with Anthony Richardson diversify my player combinations a bit more here on underdog just really quickly i do want to i want to look at uh that's a good example of so in in draft iq this isn't let me get away from best ball mini and just go to all go to all tournaments so this would be 87 teams so across 87 teams i wanted to just look at anthony richardson and I like the draft board view because it really pops off the screen, like who you have a bunch, you know, so I don't have, right. I have very, very few Anthony Richardson teams. We can look at the actual teams in just a second, but you can see really quick, like, Oh man, <laughs> Anthony Richardson. Uh, and so where, it, so Richardson is here on the board. So naturally you're going to see guys that align with his ADP that are on those teams. So something I try to do when I stumble across a combination that I don't have like a ton of is go in, look at the draft board and say, hmm, okay, Anthony Richardson. Now let's think about in the future, remind yourself of here's the guys that you had with him and start diversifying around those Anthony Richardson teams. I don't even think I have him with Michael Pittman. Yeah. And on one hand, I don't really like the Michael Pittman price. There's a reason why I don't have much of him. But I I really like Anthony Richardson, and I think part of – it doesn't mean I have to draft Anthony Richardson or I have to draft Michael Pittman, but I think part of my naturally defaulting to the other players that are on the board, like Kyle Pitts, like Xavier Worthy, like Keenan Allen might be on the board at that point. Terry McLaurin has been at, at certain points here. Tight ends, Dalton Kincaid, Mark Andrews. Defaulting to those guys is because when I – I'm using these correlations. I'm using these player combinations and, and and all that kind of stuff. And I, you know, if I don't have Malik neighbors, there's nothing's going to pop off the screen to me for, for Anthony Richardson in terms of uh, correlations. Cause I, Michael Pittman's the only other Colt. I'm not, I'm not taking Jonathan Taylor and I don't particularly like Jonathan Taylor with Anthony Richardson anyway. So start to pile all those things up and then you quickly see, well, there's a reason why you're not getting as much Anthony Richardson as you want. So, like keep that I look at those things. I'm, I'm constantly trying to get those things like really down ingrained into my brain when I stumble across them here. And then uh, it allows me to much more easily rectify them after the fact. All right, let's look over at drafters. What do we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, not, not too bad. All right. We are in round five. CD Lamb, Mike Evans, Malik Neighbors, Keenan Allen. Oh my gosh. This is a nice price on Trey McBride. I have 23% Trey McBride, 18% Mark Andrews. I do have a lot of both of them <laughs> with CD and with Evans. But I'm just going to take Trey McBride. He's my top player on the board here. And it's a really nice price on him. Yeah, not much else to add. Uh, I'm taking I'm I'm taking Trey McBride. Oh, if it'll let me click. Let's refresh. Maybe they don't want me. Oh, and I, I came on the clock in some more drafts, so yeah. I did not like that. All right. Up next. Now oh, the 101. C D. Move on to the next. All right, here we go. Second round. Okay, okay. Now, this one's fun because I don't have a lot of Amon Ra. And he definitely doesn't make it to the 107 very frequently. So, here's a fun one. Let's go to... I think I know what the answer is already going to be. But if I go to our ownership projections, and I go to 
the ownership combos here as this loads. I can go back over here. I'm almost certain that I'm going to want to take Chris Olave, I think, here. So Amon Ra goes uh, normally fifth or sixth, not so seventh is not a big deal, but it will, it will, it will. Dogs are interested in this uh, combination here, it appears. Um, let's get this get this up here all right now let's go to ownership combos go over to drafters and search for uh actually let's just it should just be here on the screen i'm on ross st brown and go to next row so i'm on ross st brown and drake london is three percent uh go to olave is eight percent yeah so i think we go Olave, because as you see here, just the further we work our way down the ADP list, the projected ownership of that combo becomes higher. So it's not a huge deal, but I mean, it's 50% more, right? Nico, there's 50% more Nico teams with Amon Ra than there are Olave. Basically 50% more Waddle, 75% you know, more Ayuk and Evans. And so, uh, you know, almost 50% more Debo Samuel. So, you know, whether this is one of the things that I think I've improved the most upon this year is like, whether I love the player, I'm drafting so many teams, right? We're talking about being on, <laughs> on the clock in all these slow drafts. I'm doing tons of fast drafts. I'm trying to get, you know, hundreds, if not into the thousands of teams. I'm, this is the exact spot. I like, I, you're just not going to get this potential combination very frequently, and it's far less owned than all these other combinations available here. So um, we take Chris Olave. Two and take CD. And I, I know I'm just when we keep getting like the 101 or or, or 102. Uh, I'm still pretty close enough to my expectation with Tyreek Hill and CD Lamb that I'm not forcing any of that uh as time is going to go on maybe as we do more of these you might see i do maybe pull someone up to the 101 uh just take justin jefferson at the 101 to get some of those unique combinations i'm just not there yet um still working through my own personal like i'm i i, I want to be part of the reason why i take the wide receivers early is my my plan is to be well overweight all of the elite wide receivers uh if I start to get very disproportionate to CD lamb over Tyreek Hill, over Jamar chase, over Justin Jefferson, et cetera, uh, I can start to rectify that, but I can never have that pick back. I can never have that CD lamb team. And general math will say that it's going to kind of even itself out over the course of the, of the summer. Uh, but I will be a little bit heavier probably on CD lamb because uh, just how he doesn't go the one Oh two every time. And I take him one Oh one. I'm going to continue down that path and and just be very cognizant of of that. All right, we took we took the the Drake London Marvin Harrison pairing here, which is the most popular pairing at the one two turn. So something to think about. Uh, oh, you can't see it on your screen. Let me move my dome here. Uh, so you see Drake London, and this is what I have highlighted is with Marvin Harrison, and that is. Uh, Basically, you know, so 28% London plus Marvin Harrison. Those are your most popular combinations. London, Wilson, London, Harrison, Harrison, Wilson, and then like mix some Gibbs and Devontae in there. That's all. That's what everybody's drafting at the one, two turn. So now what do we think about the few, you know, these upcoming next picks? I don't want to, I'm not forcing crazy uniqueness here at this spot, but I'm also not just jamming uh, immediately the top guy if it's if I, I don't want to build the same first five or six picks that everybody builds uh constantly i don't want to deviate ev like every single draft at every single pick but i I'm, i want to be very cognizant that i'm not just ripping the net the guy at the top of the list and absolutely every single you know 25 percent of the teams that have this guy in the thousands of teams have this exact same combination it's very difficult to win when all of your most important players are the exact same as everybody else's Let's see here. I will say Travis Kelsey looks good. 
let's 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 take a look at all right. So we said London Harrison is fifteen percent. Let's go, and then let's go. So London, London HN is eight percent. London Kyron and okay. So I look at this. I would have said Kelsey is a couple picks past ADP. You know, maybe this is. Uh, uh, let's take Kelsey because that'll be nope. Wrong. We project Kelsey to be very very popular with London. So naturally, he's also going to be popular with. Um, Marvin Harrison, that that is the chalk start at the one-two turn. Marvin Harrison, Drake London, and Travis Kelsey. Not you don't have to like completely avoid that, but look, if I just move to tank, I'm not taking Derrick Henry. You can't make me not even if there's a fire. Uh, so it's not the total chalk pairing, but George Pickens is very popular. T. Higgins is very popular. You know, because a lot of th- this people are double tapping this. So I think. I think I'm going to go tank. Tank Amari is pretty interesting. That's also pretty interesting because I don't have a ton of Amari. And because Amari is not the zero RB bros type of wide receiver. They're definitely taking Kelsey. They're definitely taking Laporta. As you see here, they like Josh Allen. They like George Pickens. They like some of these guys. So, um, I have only 3% of Amari Cooper. Is Tank gone? Oh, yeah. Tank's long gone. Okay. So what was Christian Kirk? Okay. So we're going to do Christian Kirk with Amari Cooper. And I just want to look real quick at my my ownership on drafters. Let's go to – let's just go to lineups. It's easiest. Go over to drafters. Okay, 62 te- through 62 teams. What did I say? Uh, London, Harrison. Oh, come on. London and Marv. So I have those four teams. Do I have Kirk, Christian Kirk? God, I always type in last name in it. Christian Kirk. Do I have Christian Kirk on any of them? One. Okay. I, there's no way I have Amari. No. Okay. So for sh- we're for sure going to take Amari. What about a Laporta? What about Laporta? Probably not. That would be pretty interesting. What did we say for the ownership? London, Laporta, 14. So it's pretty flat. It's not a big, I don't think it's a huge deal. I do think I'm going to stray away from Kelsey. I would have taken Tank if he was here. Let's do. I, I, uh, I'm still going to take Christian Kirk. I have just so many tight ends I like later. I understand the Laporta idea, but we're going to do Christian Kirk and Amari Cooper here. All right, four more to go. Round seven. Okay. We have started Kyler Murray, Tyree Kill. Malik, not in that order. That would be that would be crazy. Get Tyreek Hill in the second round. Tyreek Hill, Malik Neighbors, Cooper Cup, Trey McBride, DeAndre Hopkins, and Kyler Murray. So we got our nice little Kyler, Trey McBride stack, one of my favorites. But then this does put us in this interesting spot. 75 overall. Um, the tight ends jump out the most to me here for sure. George Kittle. And Evan Ingram, although I'm not a big Ken Walker guy, I am a big Ramondre Stevenson guy. So let's look at, you know, the Ramondre teams with some of my guys here. So nine, interesting. I have 18%, first number here, I have 18% Ramondre Stevenson, but I don't have him much with Tyree Kill. I do have him a good at a good rate, 21%, with Malik Neighbors, 25% with Cooper Cup. This 30% number here is with my first quarterback. So these numbers in a row. Overall exposure to the player. Exposure with the your first quarterback. Exposure with your first tight end. And then exposure with your first round pick, second round pick, third round pick. Those are the settings that I, excuse me, that I just like to use because I'm, I'm so hyper-focused on the combinations of players and how I'm mixing and matching them all together. Um, 
because I have the guys I really, really want, and I just, they're going to be huge exposures. But then I want to make sure that <clears throat> we don't get to September. And like I said earlier, Jamar Chase and Terry McLaurin. I think that's the pair. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to get to September, and I drafted twelve hundred best ball teams, and I don't have Jamar Chase with Terry McLaurin, even though I have a bunch of like hundred, you know, a <laughs> hundred something teams with each of them on them. I don't want to get to that point. So I like to use these as kind of my tiebreakers. You'll see, I, you know, I ignore some of these guys. I'm, uh, Ken Walker's got to fall much further for me to, to take him here. D David Montgomery honestly needs to fall further, especially on drafters. Um, CJ Stroud just does not make sense on this team at all. I'm not a fan of Keon Coleman. I will take a, just a dabble probably of Keon Coleman over the course of this summer on a Josh Allen team, but not on this team. So again, the tight ends stand out. Ramondre stands out. Jake Ferguson doesn't make a whole ton of sense, although I don't have Jake Ferguson on any of my Kyler teams. So that's at least interesting. I don't have Aaron Jones. What the hell? I don't have Aaron Jones on any of my Kyler Murray teams. So while I like a 10% Ingram, I don't have any Ingram with Cup. What's Kittle? I have 15%. Oh, okay. This is the answer. I have I have 15% George Kittle. He's one of my favorite picks in fantasy. I have zero George Kittle, Kyler Murray teams, and zero George Kittle, Trey McBride teams. And like my exposure with Tyreek, Neighbors, and Cup is so-so. I also think he's a pretty darn good pairing with Trey McBride. I'm a big fan of bully tight end on drafters this year. So we're going to, we're going to roll George Kittle three more. Hmm. Here we go. There's a slightly different version of the London and Harrison team. We got Wilson and Harrison. What? Uh, Wilson. It's previous. Garrett Wilson plus Harrison. Okay. Yeah. So, it's one of our chalkier pairings there. Then let's move to Garrett Wilson plus Tank. Oops. Garrett Wilson plus Tank Dell. Next row is 7%. Okay, so we're already like 15% on the first two, 7% on the next guy. Not too worried about this. I will just look, I guess, at Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk, it's pretty, you know, th this whole tier is pretty flat. I think everybody, I'm not, I'm not getting out over my skis worrying too much about which guy I take here. I, I took Christian Kirk and Amari last time. I don't have any, I don't have any Amari with Garrett Wilson or Marvin Harrison. 30% 30, 30 of my Marvin Harrison teams have Kirk. So I might stray from there. I have a dabble of, I don't have Allen with tank Dell, but I do have Allen. I, I'm, I can't believe I'm doing this Amari thing. We're gonna have to delete this video or like, uh, you know, cut this part. We're going to cut this, but I'm taking Amari Cooper again. <laughs> Yeah, it's all it's just so flat at this spot. Wilson and London and Puka, everybody just takes the same. But this is an interesting part that like if you just you know find a way to get Hertz AJ Brown with like I know you're not gonna get him with this, but or or reach for Devonta Smith because Hertz is just not owned with these guys, Hollywood is not owned with these guys. Just some spurring some thoughts here okay i already see brock bowers is on the top of the list and i do not have brock bowers wow okay 10 percent. Uh, you see i have 10 percent brock bowers don't have brock bowers with so i don't have a uh a quarterback yet so naturally this first number is going to be zero but i don't have brock bowers and george kittle on drafters on drafters i'm sure i do elsewhere i don't have him with jefferson i don't have him with dk metcalf or nico collins so Honestly, that one's pretty easy. Although, Jaden Daniels, I guess, I guess I should take a second because 
I got really excited for, for Brock Bowers, obviously. I mentioned I'm really big on bully tight end. I really like him, but I am slightly concerned about getting locked out of quarterback here. Um, let's. I'm not going to pick again until 116. That is where Caleb goes, okay? And Purdy. I could probably do something of a backdoor stack with Lawrence. So it, it really is Jaden Daniels or Brock Bowers. I'm glad I at least stopped to think about this instead of smashing, smashing the draft button. But then I need to make sure I get, to me, probably one of these four guys. I could wait. Gino is okay. But Jordan Love is gone. And then it's just backdoor, crappy backdoor stack options. You know, I got Minnesota. I got a Minnesota stack here, but I don't really like JJ McCarthy. So definitely Jaden Daniels or Brock Bowers. What do we say? You know, Bowers. I just don't have Bowers with any of the any of the guys I've drafted here, but I don't really have that much with Jaden Daniels. I guess 40 Jaden Daniels is on 40% of my D game. That guy seems. That's weird. Twenty percent of Nico teams. I don't have Jaden Daniels with Justin Jefferson. Shit, this is tough. Eleven percent. Eleven percent with Kittle. So it's totally fine. I have thirteen percent of them. Let's let's take Bowers. I'm I'm stressing over this one. Let's take Bowers because Bowers and Daniels are like two of my favorite picks in the whole draft. I know Jane Daniels is not going to get back to me. This, this quarterback room doesn't look like one that's going to give it to me anyway. It's technically possible, but it's not going to happen. But we'll hopefully get Williams or Purdy. If not, we'll take Lawrence and try to go with Gabe Davis. I think that's okay. It's not ideal. Or we can turn it into a late-round quarterback team with Geno and something from Minnesota something like that. I would feel better. I would just feel better about that than missing out on Bowers, especially Bowers doesn't really fall past ADP all that often. And so I'm going to, I'm just going to go ahead and take that, that chance. It's technically not impossible for Jaden Daniels to fall back, although it's basically impossible, but uh, we know Bowers isn't. All right. Last one. Let's see. This is hell. I just felt like I was in hell just now. Oh, uh, this one's fairly straightforward for me, but I do think I'm going to... All right, so here's what we're going to do on this one. We're going to pull somebody up. So we just went through this ownership projection nonsense, right? We just went through this. Uh, let's go back to the first round. So if I take... Let's let's just say I take... You know me. I, I'm, I'm sticking to my zero running back guns. I got no problem with B. John Robinson, but I'm sticking to my zero running back guns. Naturally, you might just say, well, just take... You, know, you talked about taking A.J. Brown... Before an underdog, you're trying to make sure you get a little bit of AJ Brown. Yes, but I'm also wanting to find a way to get the hell away from all of those same combinations that everyone is getting with these guys at the turn with Garrett Wilson, with Drake London, with Puka Nakua, and with Marvin Harrison Jr. So, how do I get away from those exact same combinations that everybody else is going to take? Well, I pull one of those guys up a few picks. Garrett Wilson, let's see, Garrett Wilson, if I took Garrett Wilson eighth, I'm up again at pick 17. Oops. Pick 17 is the range of, let's just start, Devante, Olave, Nico. Let's just say out, or Waddle. Devante, Devante, Olave, Nico, or Waddle. Let's look at the difference in how popular Garrett Wilson is with Drake London, Marvin, right? 15%, 15%, 14% 15%, of, of Devonta, 12 with Olave, but only seven with Nico, and only 3% with Jalen Waddle. I'm pretty interested in going that route. I could do Drake London as well. And then that would give me again, Devonta is only 7%, Chris Olave 6%, Nico 3%. Let's let's do Garrett Wilson. We're gonna pull Garrett Wilson up and then 
probably won't record on this one. Uh, then it won't have this recorded and try to do this every week. Probably won't be recording when this one, I make it to my next pick, but uh, you never know. We're going to pull up Garrett Wilson. All right. That is going to do it for the very first edition of Slow Draft Hell here on Spike Week. Uh, if you have not yet, click like and subscribe. Again, go check out Ben Gretsch's stuff. He's the one who uh, got me thinking about this idea, and I love it. Thinking through the, the talking through the thought process when we get on the clock in slow drafts. I know a lot of you guys are doing slow drafts, and I have unfortunately given in to the slow draft fever. Uh, be back next week to do another walkthrough of another round of way, way, way too many slow drafts. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. One. Ooh, those were some spicy takes. Want to stay up to date with all of the other spicy takes we're going to have over here at Spike Week? Why don't you press that subscribe button below? You turn notifications on, we draft a team, boom, you know about it. We have another spicy take, boom, you know about it. You can be there. You can draft with us. You want to stay up to date? That's how you do it. All right, we'll catch you later next time here at Spike Week. Spike Week.